community. So welcome for being here today. This is a session, the welcoming prayer embodied, consent on the go. I'm here with my sister in dance, my colleague. This is Wendy Morel for the Sacred Dance Trip. And I am Kule Lehua, and we are very happy that you are here. This session will be about deepening our connection to the divine indwelling in the moments of everyday life. And we will have some embodied experience, as well as I'll talk a little bit about what the welcoming prayer is, where it comes from, and all of those things. You are welcome to use the chat at any point to put in anything you like, what your session, if you're doing a session later, whatever you might like to share with your friends here. I've put in some links to some websites that we use, as well as in the details for this session, which you may be able to find if you scroll down. If not, you can find them again on the, on the main page. When you click to details, you'll see various documents that are the presentation, the PowerPoint from this, and other, other delightful things that you might want to know more about the welcoming prayer. So. Uh, if you have a question that you want me specifically to speak to, if you can use the Q&A, great. But if not, my friend Wendy will be monitoring things and she will interrupt me when I am not paying attention and I need to know what's going on. So this is session is for you, what it is that you need in this moment. So I am Kule Lehua, like I said, and I am from Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, I have been here in Hawaii for about 40 years. I give thanks to the indigenous people of this land, the Kanaka Maole, the Hawaiian people. This is a land that was um, first discovered by Polynesians in the 12th century and they came and this area where I live, which I put up here on the screen for you, is the first area, according to legend, that the Polynesians came, the largest fish pond area here in the island, which is now half filled with homes that they settled in in the 50s, 1950s. And between these two mountains, so when I live right here between these in the Ahu Pa'a Waimanama, which is a, in Hawaiian culture, there were areas of the island and the people in those areas worked together and include the mountains all the way to the sea. So I give thanks to the people of this land for allowing me to be here and for this. So I, like you, am a person who's had a history. I've done all kinds of things in my life. And the welcoming prayer is about the fact that what we are and who we are and the things that we've done live on in our bodies. The issues are in the tissue. Where are we? Who are we? All of the things that I've experienced. The, the joy of my son, the death of my son, the wonders of s snorkeling, the pain of having cancer, all of those things are still embodied in me. And in day-to-day -day life, I often find that things come up that really have nothing to do with the moment, but happened to something that's happened previously. And the welcoming prayer is about living with those things, being embodied in them, and inviting the divine and dwelling to be with you. So the practice comes from contemplative outreach. It's not something I made up. Father Keating and Mary Morowski, uh, who is this wonderful dancey lady, she is the creator of this spiritual practice with the community of the Chrysalis House, which is an intentional living community. And she worked with Father Thomas Keating, who is the father of Centering Prayer. And his talk's description of her was, her bonding with God became so exuberant that everything she did became a prayer. And I like to think that that would be possible for us, that everything we do is a prayer. So I'm grateful for this prayer and this practice. So let's just go right to it. Let's look at this prayer and this practice. And we're going to... Stop the share so that you can take a moment and I can see you. Oh, I can't see you. I forgot. <laughs> oh, how delightful. I can see my friend Wendy and I can see your heart being reflected through your, your delightfulness in this space. Our hearts are connected all throughout the world. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Taking a breath. 
feel and sink into your body. I welcome everything that comes to me today because I know it is for my healing. I welcome all thoughts, feelings, emotions, persons, situations, and conditions. I let go of my desire for power and control. I let go of my desire for affection, esteem, approval, and pleasure. I let go of my desire for survival and security. I let go of my desire to change any situation, condition, person, or myself. I open to the love and presence of God and God's action. welcoming prayer practice is about this warehouse of the unconscious, this body. This is a picture of an island off the coast where I live, and you can see this peak of this island coming up above the water. But what we don't see is this unconsciousness, this that is below the surface, that is dwelling in our bodies with the divine indwelling. The welcoming prayer practice is designed to be done in, in the moments of everyday life. So when you have a circumstance that comes up, and we're going to call those triggering events, it might be the sound doesn't work on the presentation. It might be someone cuts you off in traffic. It might be something really difficult like a death of a loved one. There are triggering events, and they're triggering events because we have our own attachments and aversions, things we like and things we don't like. We want those, and when those interact with the, this triggering event, it becomes a trigger, whatever it might be. I push that button, and oh my gosh, it happens. For me, it's the loud sounds when I'm turning that down. So, I'm very good at that. Well, when the frustration happens, whatever the, ex the experience might be for you in that moment, we could take a moment to pause, to consent to God's presence and action in our life. Or we could do all these other things. We could have, you know, we could erupt, we could be excited, we could sulk. There's many things, and I know there's a lot of things on the screen now, but if the thing that you do is not here, know that it's just a blinking of the brain. Whatever it might be that happens to you when something sets you up. And the idea with the welcoming prayer is that it comes in in that moment, in that time. And it's not that these feelings and emotions would go away. You'll still have them. But by inviting the divine indwelling, consenting to the divine indwelling's presence in your life, they become different and you might have additional things that came in. You might suddenly feel safe, or there might be calmness, or perhaps not. So for me, this practice, the issues and the tissues, I like to, to look at it like this. I have this consciousness, and the consciousness allows me to feel and sink into my body. It allows me to sense what I'm feeling in the moment. I can welcome the experience, welcome all that's happening to me right now. A little fluttering my heart, I'm a little nervous, I can't see people, where are they, am I here, is anyone else here, or Wendy's here, I have that that's going on for me right now, and I'm welcoming that experience, and in this moment, along with welcoming that experience, I welcome that divine indwelling, the indwelling presence, the spark, the mystery, come and be here with me, and then there's all these unconscious things, fear of abandonment, the things that happened to me as a child, all these things that, that are dwelling in my body that when I get triggered, they come up again. And they don't come up consciously. This is an unconscious. This practice is about letting those go and embracing this moment.
So the first step is to feel and sink into the body, sense the experience. And we're gonna spend some time going through just all of this, this movement practice. I'm just gonna summarize it for you and then we're gonna just move. We'll have so much fun. And the second movement is to welcome this in your body as an opportunity to consent. And the third movement is to let go. And we let go by saying, I let go of my desire for security, affection, control, and embrace this moment as it is. And I know that we need security, affection, and control. We need all of these things. But this is about being attached to them, attached to them to the level that they interfere with the activities of daily life. So let's do this together. So find yourself a comfortable place. You can be sitting, lying down, standing. I'm gonna stand and move around and Wendy's gonna join me, lovely. The first step for feeling and sinking into the body is to just feel the breath. Notice the breath in your body. Move in whatever small way that works for you, feeling the breath come. I'm going to turn on my fan and help me feel that breath. Warm here. So feel the breath. I sense the smells around me. I have I've been decked in flowers. I can smell them. Maybe you smell food cooking or something from your environment as the breath in the air. Now we're going to engage in a body scan and we're going to start at the top of our body, the head, and we're going to sense what's in our head. Now, you can tap, I'm lightly tapping, but you can also do this by just using your internal vision to sense what's going on in your head, in your face. Is it tight? Does it feel sore? Maybe I have a little tension between my eyebrows. How does your jaw feel? Your lips, your ears, the space behind your ears, your eyes, the space behind your eyes, the things you've seen, the things you wish you hadn't seen, the things you wish you would see, and the smells, and the tastes, and the words that come from our throat. Noticing the throat. Notice any sensation you may feel. No need to label it or try to change it. But you're allowed to move while you do this. So the back of your neck. For me, I find that to be able to really sense my neck and where it connects to my head and my torso, I need to move it. So I'm going to move my head. It makes a little sounds for me. And come where your throat connects into your torso, your clavicle, your shoulders, and the arms connect into the body, biceps and triceps, the elbow, the forearm, the wrist, the hand, the finger. On the other side of the body where the arm connects in, the biceps and triceps, the elbow, the forearm, the wrist, and the Take lots of time feeling and sinking into the body and noticing. Because in the moment, we want to be really good at this. So when something happens in the moment, we can find our bodies. And I'm a mover, and I still find this hard. So we come to the torso, our lungs come up and down our back. So feeling the breath in your back and down to the center of your back and your lower back, feeling, sensing, down your sides, 
feel and sense. You feel a little tightness. And just notice if you feel tightness or pain, whatever it might be, just notice it. Coming on the front side, notice your heart rate. Is it fast or slow? Can you hear it? In the breath, and then we come to the na'al, the indigenous people of this land call this space between your rib cage and your navel, the na'al is where the thoughts and emotions are felt. And this is where we think from this space in our body. And oftentimes I sense things here, perhaps you do too. And then we come to the place that we sit upon and into our creation parts and our gut. And then where the legs connect in to the torso, your hip joint, connecting in and coming down the leg, the thigh, the knee, the shin, the calf, the miraculous ankle, feet. Amazing that we can walk on these feet and perhaps you can feel them on the ground and flex them and perhaps they're in a shoe or a sock. Perhaps they are just out in the air. And coming down the other side, where the leg connects into the torso, and the thigh, and the knee. The calf and the shin, the ankle, and the foot. Notice and feel and sink into all of those feelings in this moment. In this moment, as it is. And so now that we've had kind of a sense of where our body is, let's look at the ways we can balance the actions in our body, helping our neurological pathways. One of the ways is to really notice where your spine is. Your spine goes from your tail to right up to right below, connects into your cranium, to your head space. And so just notice that, wiggle that spine. The synovial fluid is the fluids that come there in your nerve endings. I like to think of it as the grace and the love and the joy of God flowing through you. And when you wiggle your spine, all of your body benefits. So if you're someone who gets stiff when you sit, if you get up and wiggle your lower spine, it will make a difference. The upper spine often gets kind of frozen up, especially this mid-back. And so let's bring our hearts forward and bring our hearts in. Bring the heart forward again. Now bring the heart up. For me to bring the heart up, I have to actually bend my knees for this to happen. So make sure you're keeping yourself comfortable and in the space you need to be. And then coming to a centered place. Bring your heart to one side and bring your heart to the other side. And now see if you can take that upper, your thoracic spine, that upper part of your body and circle one way, feeling and connecting and circling the other way. As we feel and sink into the body. Noticing all of the places. One of the ways to help our body process trauma is the startle reflex. So something that happens in the first year of life, you've seen a baby and a baby, a baby's all sleeping sweetly and then a loud sound happens and they jump. We as adults, when we hear a loud sound, we don't jump anymore. Instead, it gets all frozen in our bodies. So if we take some time to come into that safe oneness place, where we're so safe and we're so connected, and then we reach out, jumping or slow, however, feeling that, this can really help that edginess that might come up in the body, processing it, being with it. So two more times in your own time, coming to the smallness, and then when you're ready, reaching out, make sure you reach behind you sometimes or to the side, above and below. <sighs> the 
lower body is about our beliefs and where we are. So oftentimes, if you, you may have seen the super person stance where people stand like this, and that's about putting this energy into the lower body. If you're in a situation where you have these strong beliefs and you're feeling wishy-washy or you're feeling stressed about how do I describe this? How would anyone believe me? Which happens for me. Putting that, that energy into your lower body, your faith, your belief, and feeling the lower body. So take a little time to move in the space, feeling your lower body. In the Hawaiian hula tradition, we circle our hips, and it's really like a smile. So it's flat across the front and it goes out to the back. Circle one way, and then to balance, circle the other. Draw figure eight on the ground. And draw figure eight on the screen. The hips are coming up and down from one side to the other. And then walk a figure eight on the ground for the infinity sign. Let's make it the infinity sign. And we welcome. We welcome all that we're feeling in this moment. And the upper body reaches out into the world. This is how we share and receive. Reaching out, noticing, reaching up, coming down, looking to one side, and to the other. And now following your hands with your eyes, looking up. Eye tracking allows our brains to engage with the body, coming down on the other side, reaching up and coming down to the other side. And looking down, again, you're following your hands with your eyes. And the other side. See if you can wrap around to kind of look over your shoulder, however that is comfortable for you. And then coming to center and wrapping around to the other side. Now we'll go into the sidedness, which is about decision making. When you have a choice to make, to feel it in your body, to feel and sink in. Accentuating one side of the body builds the other side of the brain. So I have a choice. Should I talk more about the place I live, or should I talk more about the welcoming prayer? Or, you know, I have choices. Should I retire? Should I go back to work? whatever the choices are, and then you might take that same choice and put it in the other side of the body so that you're processing it. And then you trust the body to give you signals to allow you to know where you are and what you're doing. And then we come across the body. This helps integrate the right and left sides of the brain so we can give ourselves a giant hug And then let's hug ourselves lower. Let's hug ourselves over our heads. And behind the head, if you can. Hug behind your back. And maybe low behind your back. And if you can't actually cross, imagine you're crossing. Whatever it is for you. And now wiggle again. My spine got really activated by that. Wiggling the spine is always a good thing. And then the last thing we want to do is build our vestibular system or our sense of balance in the world and in the places. And to do that, we become a tiny bit dizzy, just a little bit. But the healing and the growth of the vestibular system happens in the stillness, in the recovery. I think that may be true of everything in life. We have all these things happen. And we're, we're struggling, and then in the recovery, the compassion in action is that compassion for the self and the recovery in the body. So t t if you're comfortable turning and you're standing, that's great. Otherwise, you can tilt from side to side. The vestibular system is 
the eyes and the ears and the proprioceptors, which are all throughout the body, telling us where we are in space and time. So we move from side to side, making sure your eyes are focusing on things. That's what helps us to stay busy. I'm going to turn. I like to turn. I let go of the desire for security, affection, control, and embrace. And I come into stillness. In the stillness, you feel the healing happening, welcoming all that you're experiencing, welcoming the divine indwelling, the divine spirit, the miracle, the mystery, the spark. And now, if you were tilting sideways, tilt forward and back. If you were turning, turn the other direction. And you want to become dizzy again, and again, engaging the eyes helps us become dizzy. I become dizzy very fast doing this tilt. You can continue to go a few more seconds, or turn if you prefer. And to turn, because I can turn without becoming too. This can help with all kinds of balances in the spiritual life and also vertigo and the, the physical parts that happen to us. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome the experience. hard for me to be still and the healing happens in the stillness to help our tendency to move and sway and find the space and maybe you do too so now we're going to talk a little bit more about the welcoming prayer and if you have questions about the welcoming prayer we're going to look at it in a little more depth and then we will move through it in a quicker fashion. So the welcoming prayer is designed to be done on the breath in the moment. So inhaling acceptance, inhaling surrender. Inhaling as you feel and sink into the body, noticing, welcoming the experience of the body, welcoming the divine in dwelling, and letting go. And the hardest part of this for I think everyone is the letting go part. So let's look at the letting go for a moment. Letting go, how do we let go? And, and let it mean that we don't need these things. It means we're letting go of our attachment to them and allowing the divine and dwelling to be there with us in this place and time. So it may be difficult to let go. It's quite difficult for me. Um, we have a mind and it tells us things like, oh, I'm right. Everybody else is wrong. <laughs> maybe, maybe you don't have that, but I certainly have that. And by letting go of my need to be right, I allow the divine indwelling to come in. And you know, maybe I was right. But maybe the divine indwelling will let me see somewhere else. Something else. We have emotions and feelings that validate the way we think. So I think a particular way because that's my life experience and I'm enjoying that and my emotions tell me, oh yes, that's right. And we just know that that's part of us. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if we let go of our desire for that affection, that control, that security, if we let go of that attachment, we allow perhaps a new view to come in. So letting go to whatever's happening on this interior level and surrender. And by surrendering, I mean we're, we're turning to the divine indwelling, that indwelling presence so that we can, we can see really what is actually happening on the interior level. 
and surrender to the reality instead of perceiving it all through our thoughts and feelings and emotions. So this has been a, a, a year of a lot of things happening for people. Um, our 18 months of this COVID time, this time of grief. And in this parliament, we're talking about opening our hearts to the world. I don't know about you, but my heart has been broken over and over and over in this time period. I have been broken over, open so many times in this time period. Maybe you have too, or perhaps something else has happened for you. And so opening our hearts to the world does not sound like a really safe thing to be doing. But with the welcoming prayer practice, knowing that I'm, as I'm surrendering, as I'm letting go, the divine indwelling, that indwelling presence is with me, and that I can trust my body to help me with all of those things, it makes a difference. So my favorite part of the theme for this, though, is compassion and action. Because to me, that is what the welcoming prayer is. It's compassion and action for me, that I can be self-compassionate, that when things come up, and I am traumatized, or, you know, it can be something small. Um, I was at the, on the Big Island of Hawaii recently, and there's a live volcano on the Big Island of Hawaii. And I got to go and see the volcano erupt and stay there and see the fountaining, and I felt fine there. But I stayed at my friend's house, who lives where the eruption was three years ago. And in her neighborhood, many homes were destroyed. People lost, no human life was lost, but many animals and plants and all sorts of things were destroyed. When I'm in that place, I feel the stress in my body. Maybe there's a place that brings it up for you in this time. So take a moment and just close your eyes and feel them sink into your body and notice. that is is coming up for you notice where you feel it in your body might be an emotion a feeling a sensation notice feel and sink into that sensation welcome Embrace this moment as it is, embracing this feeling in your body. Welcome, and as you welcome this experience, it's an opportunity to consent to the divine indwelling, that indwelling presence. That spark, that mystery, whatever it is that you use for that, the higher power, God, whatever it is, you have something, you are here in this this environment, it may be nature, it could be anything, but you trust, you let go into that consenting to that divine presence, whatever the word is you use for the divine presence, and let go. Let go of the desire for security, affection, control. And embrace this moment. This is it. Embrace this moment. For one of the, the delightful things in your hands out is this image, which is what I use to help me with this prayer, to remember it, to feel and sink in, to welcome and let go. And it has this short version of this prayer. I let go of the desire for security, affection, control. And if this prayer is something that appeals to you, it feels like something that, oh, I think this makes sense to me. There's much more information you can get about it. There's workshops. Uh, my personal website and YouTube channel has them, but there's contemplative outreach has many things about this. So Mary Morawski, who is the mother of this, says to welcome and let go is one of the most radically loving, faith-filled gestures we can make in the moment of every day. 
It's an open-hearted embrace of all that is in ourselves and in them. But this is my very favorite quote of all of hers, which is, the way to, pra to understand this practice is to do it. This prayer, this practice, we only understand it when we do it because it is completely and absolutely illogical and irrational. It makes no sense that this works. I have no idea why would I trust that this works, but I found that it does. So we practice, we practice, and the goal is consent on the goal, to be able to, in the moment, inhale acceptance and exhale strength. So are there, oh, I never asked you to pop up the polls. Could you launch the polls for me, Wendy? And were there any questions in the chat? Um, so I'm a retired librarian and I really love polls. So as the polls pop up, you can answer them. You can also find them under the poll link. They'll come on your screen. So. Give you a couple of moments. Uh, were there any questions in the chat? I don't see any right now. Okay, so we will just then close with some of my favorite pictures because it's so fun to show great pictures. And I live in a place that really allows for that. So if you have questions, though, please feel free to, to put them in the chat or contact me afterwards. All right, so here is one of the places where I walk in the morning for my sunrise walk. And it allows me to remember why I do these things. Because that light was flickering off and on and making me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> so I feel and sink into my body. I inhale and ex exhale. And let go. Um, so I see a question. Can I clarify welcoming prayer versus contemplative prayer? So the welcoming prayer is an active practice. So the idea is that it's an active practice to be done in the moments of ordinary life. So for me, anyways, contemplative practices, I sit in silence, I do centering prayer, I do walking meditations with a mantra, um, so centering prayer. So that's a, a silently sitting in silence with your divine, and you build that reservoir of silence that you take with you to everyday life. This is a complementary practice in that same school, so in contemplative outreach, which is where centering prayer comes from. It's the welcoming prayer and several other prayers. And the welcoming prayer is about the moments of everyday life. To, to feel and sink into the body, to welcome what you're feeling, welcoming the divine indwelling as an opportunity to consent to feelings or an opportunity to consent to the divine indwelling and let go of your desire for security and perfection. Embracing this moment. So it's the everyday life moment. That answers that question. Um, they're taught together often. So the just as in centering prayer, we don't necessarily see the results from centering prayer happening in our in the moment when we're centering, but they happen in the everyday life. And usually it's someone else that notices them. They may be small moments, things that change. And there should be a video for this later, so thank you. And so the fruits of the welcoming prayer offer, offer us opportunities to respond instead of react, to embrace instead of fighting or suppressing our feelings, to freely and lovingly move towards appropriate action, and to become free to experience the divine presence, which might heal or provide our needs or transform us, or perhaps just be with us as we live through this. 
So um, in the handouts and here on the screen, there's many places you can learn more about this. If you'd like to engage in a group um, who does this regularly, there are play people who do this on the um, in the meditation chapel. I'm going to skip over right about at the end of our time. So here are the two places where I regularly lead welcoming prayer practices. One is in the meditation chapel, which is a contemplative. Typically, people are sitting, not moving around. And then uh, one day a week, I lead mindful brain dance, which is a moving, embodied, welcoming prayer practice. Both of these times are Hawaii time. So uh, my website is on the screen, but it's also in the chat, and it's in my bio. So you can go there, and it has it's a free. There's Zoom links to get into them. Um, and if you haven't done the Meditation Chapel yet, I highly recommend it. It's a wonderful place to get to go and hang out with other likewise like people. And remember, your task is not to seek for love, but to find all those barriers within yourself that you may have. So it says it's going to stop us in 31 seconds. So if there's any other questions, um, I would love to hear from you or, or see your text. But otherwise, I think we're in that perfect place. So Wendy, you could end all of the polls if you want. <laughs> so thank you all for being here. Uh, whether you're here in in the same moment that this is being presented, or whether you're here later, know that in in when we tell mo'olelo, when we tell stories in Hawaiian, we say that there is no timeline. It's not linear. It all comes in all the different shapes, and that's true. Aloha no kakoa.